Colored stripes move diagonally on the screen, and a multicolored title appears. It says, Seven Saturdays to a more fire-resistant home. A colored drawing of a simple beige house appears in the background. A title appears on an orange screen that says, Episode 1, Defensible Space Around Your Home. Alicia Mason appears on screen. She is a young woman with shoulder-length tightly curled tawny hair and blue eyes. She wears a pink-toned flannel shirt over a gray t-shirt and blue jeans. As Alicia talks, she and David Hawkes, a safety specialist at PG&E walk around a brown house that has dark green trim. David has short gray hair and wears blue jeans and a light blue button-down PG&E shirt. First, they pick up pine needles from around the house. Then they rake needles and other vegetation debris. David cleans out the gutters using a tool that's on a wooden pole. They move logs and a stainless steel barbecue away from the house. Hello, I'm Alicia Mason, and I'm the host of a brand new series called Seven Saturdays to a Fire-Resistant Home. Each week, we'll talk about ways to make your home safer and more resilient in wildfire season. We're gonna show you three simple and easy things you can do today that can help protect the immediate area around your home. First, we're gonna teach you how to spot and remove the little things that increase the risk of your home catching fire from embers. Next, we'll clear those stubborn gaps in your patio or deck and demonstrate how to properly maintain other vulnerable spaces like your roof. And finally, we'll show you how to remove combustible items to better prepare your property for a wildfire. If you've ever had a question about where and how to store items such as patio furniture and propane tanks, you're gonna to wanna to stick around. But I need some help. I wanna introduce you to the former chief of the Cal Fire Butte Unit and now senior public safety specialist at PG&E, David Hawks. Thanks for having me, Alicia. All over California, our summers are getting hotter and drier and our fire seasons longer. I've seen it firsthand myself, working 31 years as a firefighter. It seems like every fire season is worse than the last one. And with this year's severe drought, we all need to do a little bit more to get ready. Firefighters work to protect homes from wildfires and it always makes their job safer when residents have prepared their homes beforehand. And that's why we're starting the series in the first place, right David? Exactly, Alicia. Well, I'm ready. Let's get started. An orange screen appears with the title, Step 1, Clearing the Little Things. Under the title is a circle that shows twigs and leaves. Alicia and David walk around the house as they talk. An animation of the beige cartoon house appears. A perimeter is colored in yellow around the house. The perimeter has a label that says, 5 feet. A stack of logs and some bushes are moved to the outside of the perimeter. David kneels down in a grotto area on the outside of the house which has a lot of vegetation debris tucked into it. On a blue screen, an animation of wind blowing leaves appears. After the leaves are blown off screen, embers appear that follow the same wind current pattern. Alicia and David put on gloves and pull bins over to the grotto so they can clean up the debris, putting it into the bins. Well, Alicia, the first place we're going to start is with defensible space. It's arguably the most important thing to protecting your home. Okay, gotcha. So for a homeowner, what is that first important thing? Well, the first thing to look for is the first five feet, the home itself and the first five feet. What we're trying to do there is we're trying to remove the little things. What are the little things? Because they, they're definitely important, correct? Absolutely. Well, we call them the little things, but maybe we should call them the big things because those are the things that can actually result in your home burning down okay. if we don't clear them. They're things like pine needles, dry grass, dead leaves, small twigs, and things that accumulate around the home or things that property owners keep around their home that could catch fire. Let's take a look around for some little things. Okay. I'll show you where they're at. Okay. Can you briefly explain why cleaning up these pine needles are so important and how you've seen that firsthand? This is absolutely one of the most important things in the first five feet. Pine needles, dry leaves, small twigs, things of that nature that accumulate. And quite often, they'll accumulate in corners and alcoves in the home. And that's where embers, they travel great distances, often miles in front of the main fire front. And they'll land just like a blizzard against your house. Where the wind blows, the embers will flow is kind of one of the things that we say. And those embers will, will blow into here and they'll catch this fine material on fire, catching eventually the siding on fire potentially and extending up the house. But it's really easy to clean it up. Well, let's start cleaning. All right, let's grab some gloves and we'll clean these up. All right, well, this is easy. Yes, now that we've cleaned up the patio, it's important to remember that there's other locations like decks that are vulnerable. 
So it's important that you look under your deck for dead pine needles and leaves. You rake that material out. To clean between the planks on the deck in the groove, you can use a sharp tool to rake that out of there. Or you can use a pressure washer to clean it as well. So during a wildfire season, obviously firefighters have so much going on. So this work that homeowners do obviously helps firefighters in a lot of ways. Can you touch on that? Absolutely. A fire truck drives by a Smokey the Bear sign that says, Fire danger today is extreme. An orange screen appears with the title, Step 2, Clearing the Deck, Patio, Roof and Gutters. Under the title is a circle that shows a gutter filled with leaves. David and Alicia stand near a roof gutter, filled with pine needles and other debris. They both hold long wooden poles, that have attachments at the end. David's on a ladder as he rakes leaves from the roof. Next, he cleans the gutters with a long pole that has a plastic bracket at the tip. When fires break out across California, the fire departments get stretched. There's not enough resources to defend every home. So everything that homeowners do makes it safer and more efficient for firefighters to do their job, protect one home and move to the next home. Definitely, and we wanna help them do that. Absolutely. Obviously. Yes, okay, well thank you. You're welcome. So great, we've cleaned the patio. So what are some other vulnerable places homeowners should maintain? Your roof and gutters are some of the most vulnerable places in your home. And you can see in this particular, uh, pine needles have accumulated in the gutters and on the roof here. Yeah. And while not everybody would feel comfortable getting up on a ladder, they should hire a professional if that's the case. But here, I feel comfortable and I'm gonna get on the ladder and clean these gutters. So what are the best tools to use for this type of work? Good question. They sell a, a cleaner that you can get down in gutters and clean it out, but I've made this tool here. It's nothing more than a broom handle with a 90 degree bracket and a hard piece of plastic. It allows me to reach out about five feet on either side of the ladder at a time. Okay, well, very inventive. It also seems very cost effective. Yes, nothing more than a broom handle, little L bracket, probably 10, $12. Perfect, all right, let's get cleaning. screen appears with the title, Step 3, Removing Combustible Items. Under the title is a circle that shows a stack of logs and a propane tank. Alicia and David stand next to a stainless steel barbecue. David takes the propane tank out from the bottom of the barbecue and places it on the patio. The animation of the beige house appears, and a large perimeter area is colored in yellow around it. The perimeter has the label, 30 feet. A stack of logs and a large propane tank are next to the house, but are quickly moved out to beyond the yellow perimeter line. Alicia and David move the barbecue away from the house to an open patio area. Next, they move a stack of firewood away from the house, as well. So my family and I love to barbecue, and as I see here, the barbecue's up against the house. Is that an issue? No, not for small barbecues, not really, although there's better places to store them. But this particular propane tank is small five gallon tank. With this five gallon propane tank, what's important is to make sure that the fitting is snug. Not over tight, but good and snug. Smell around it to make sure you don't smell any gas. Make sure that it's off when not in use and then make sure that it's sitting on a firm slab foundation or in the propane holder in the barbecue. So what about bigger propane tanks? Well, larger propane tanks are required under code to be placed away from the home when the home is built. The smaller propane tanks are not as serious a problem and can be kept closer to the home. But because we have room here at our house, we're gonna move it out to more open area where it's away from the house and it's away from other forest fuels that can put heat on this propane tank. Okay, well that sounds good, let's move it. Okay. okay. Right. Okay, so is there anything else that we should look into? Yes, we really need to look around the home to see if there's any firewood stored. Firewood should not be stored up against a home. Okay, well let's go do that. Okay. Okay. So we have some firewood here up against the house and I'm guessing that's not where it should be. No, it shouldn't be. We need to keep firewood at least 30 feet away from the home. We also should be looking for other combustible material, old cardboard boxes, anything that could catch fire. Picture yourself walking around your home with a book of matches. If you strike that match and you drop that on that particular item, would it catch fire? Because if the answer is yes, it needs to be removed. But let's start by removing this firewood. Here, Alicia. Okay, David, we are all done. That was so easy, only took an afternoon. I think it'll be so approachable for people at home. Absolutely, we accomplished a lot and we sure made our home a lot more fire safe. I feel really good about it. 
Thanks so much, David, for the help today. You know, I think it's important for everyone to remember that you aren't just protecting yourself. You're also protecting your community when you create defensible space. That's right. As a public safety specialist at PG&E, we're working on what we can do as a utility to be safer. And it's really important that we do our part. With fire seasons becoming so severe, we can all make our families and communities safer by keeping our homes as fire resistant as possible. What are we going to talk about next week? Next week, we're going to learn how to create defensible space around our homes up to 100 feet away or to the property line. And we'll see you all again next Saturday for Seven Saturdays to a Fire Resistant Home. The opening title that says, Seven Saturdays to a More Fire Resistant Home, appears once again. This title is followed by the PG&E logo. Along the bottom of the screen it says, Learn more at safetyactioncenter.pge.com.